I just want to give a little more detail on this statement by Wendy Olson. Um, this is the second statement released by Wendy Olson, and she was forced, there was such a public outcry that she was forced to release a, se a second statement. Now, in the second statement, she claimed she was talking about threats, but if you read her first statement, it makes it very clear that she says the thing that causes, if, if she misstated it, she doesn't admit misstating it here. She just tries to blame other people. But uh, her first statement said that spreading false information or making threats will be punishable by the law. Well, obviously making threats should be punishable by the law. But she included in there that spreading false information would be. And here she points out that the threats result from false and inflammatory information. Let me ask you just a question that I brought up with Caitlin Dickerson, the reporter from the New York Times. Where did this sort of thing happen in Ferguson? When false statements were being spread around about the Michael Brown case, something that led to, you, you talk about fake news turning a town upside down. Remember, that's, that's, I didn't see riots or fires being set in Twin Falls the entire time I was there. I'm a free speech advocate, and this is part of what was so disturbing to me. A government official coming out and talking about people could be prosecuted for making false statements. It's a complete outrage. I told it to the reporter, and this is part of what the cover-up was about. And again, I made this analogy to Ferguson, to the reporter. I said, it doesn't make any sense that this should happen. Again, this is what the New York Times is keeping from you, and it's shameful.